Hey guys, what's going on? Glad to have you back here. Today I'm gonna to be showing you some emulation on an iPhone, specifically with Dolphin. Now, you might be thinking, why are you emulating on an iPhone? Why don't you just use Android? Well, that's a good point. Now, however, there have been some advancements in the emulation scene on iOS, specifically with how you enable just-in-time compilation, or JIT. And I'm gonna be showing off kind of this in action here. If you guys want a full-blown tutorial on this, then please let me know, and I will throw one together for you. But the app, like I said, it enables JIT, and the cool thing about this is it's almost always on the device itself. The only time you don't, or the only time you need to use another device, whether it's a Mac or PC, is uh, setting it up. So you do need you do need that for the setup process, but afterward, you don't need it. Really, you just need that for Side Store, which you use to install the different apps. So you see here, I have Side Store installed, and I have this StickJit, and then Dolphin iOS. Let me show you StickJit here. It's very simple. Just go here, enable JIT, and boom, there we go. Now I'll also show you something cool here. If I close this out and I go into, I have airplane mode turned on, I'll turn off my Wi-Fi. There's no cell data on this phone. It's just um, basically just bought it to have a secondary device for recording and whatnot. But you can see it's on airplane mode. I can go here and enable JIT without even being connected to Wi-Fi. So it's basically on device fully there, which is so cool. Then you can see here it's it activated. And if I go to debug, you can see that GIT acquisition has occurred, which is what we want. So that's good. So let me go ahead and throw this on my GameSir X2S controller, Bluetooth controller. And I'll just kind of show you what this looks like. Now, with this specific phone, it doesn't have very good thermal management. So to combat that, I have set the CPU emulated clock to 95%. And that just kind of um, powers it down just slightly so that it prevents uh, thermal throttling, excuse me, thermal throttling in a lot of cases. Um, it would thermal throttle pretty quickly on F0GX within maybe 10 seconds of starting a race. And it doesn't do that anymore while still maintaining good speeds. Okay, and here we are, F0GX. This is one of the harder games to emulate. See, so you have the FPS in there. I'll scoot up just a little bit so you can see here. You might think that playing on this screen is a little too small, but actually this this size screen I, I really love. I love this phone overall, because they don't, they don't make these types of phones anymore. And this is the 2020 version and it, it still gets great performance. And I'm testing Firefield because this is one of the more demanding areas you can test right off the bat. Um, I just want to mention we are on 1x resolution um, with this screen size. Like I said, it, it looks really good. It's, it doesn't really need to go any higher, honestly, and you're, you're just risking thermal throttling at that point. So I like to keep it at 1x for this device, but it really doesn't look too bad. can see we're we're almost at a constant 60 there was a little there's a few drops at the beginning down to 57 but we're almost at a locked 60 here
All right, and we're gonna test this level as well. I know this level is not as demanding as the previous one, but um, when I initially started testing this, it would thermal throttle right as I hit this this jump part right here. It would start thermal throttling, and the performance would tank. But as you can see, we're we're doing pretty good here. This is really cool. From <laughs> if I'm being honest, this is really cool to see. Because back in the day, before Apple kind of nerfed the whole JIT thing on iPhones, we used to be able to play these games natively. Um, so it having the option to enable JIT in such a simple way now is really cool. When iOS 18 first launched, actually, you had to be basically tethered to a computer. It required a Mac running Xcode to, to enable JIT. And that's not the case anymore. I was using a Windows uh, Windows computer, a Mac with Windows, but I only use Windows on it. There's no Mac OS partition anymore. But anyway, yeah, that's it's very it's very cool, honestly. All right, guys, now we are testing out some Auto Modelista. This is another pretty demanding game that's kind of struggles on lower end chips, front up from what I've seen at least. And again, we're at 1x resolution, so nothing crazy. If you have a more powerful device, like a 15 Pro or whatever, you could most certainly run these at higher resolutions. But just to reiterate, I'm running it at the 1x just to save on, on the power draw. Because this, this specific device, the iPhone SE 2020, really does have poor thermal management if you're pushing it really hard. So just keep that in mind. If you have one of these older phones or one of the, one of the SEs, I'm not sure if the SE 2022 has similar issues. Um, it uses the same chip as the iPhone 13, so it'll be a little bit better. You could probably upscale it, but honestly, with this size of screen, you really don't need to. You really don't. And as you can see, it really hasn't dropped a whole lot from what I can tell. Not the greatest of this game, as you can plainly see, but it's still a really fun racing game if you never tried it. All right, guys, now we are going to test Tony Hawk's Underground, and I turned the sound off because obviously there's copyrighted music. Um, this game specifically, when you use the GameCube version, this New Jersey level really tends to struggle on lower end devices. It just lags all over the place. But as you can see here, we're, we're at a pretty solid FPS. It's sitting at 59.94, which is a little weird that it's not at 60, but it's basically 60. It feels smooth as butter. So this one seems to be running very well. So yeah guys, I'm not going to go too far into it right now, but if you guys want a tutorial on this, please let me know. I'm more than happy to throw something together for you, but that's basically it. I just wanted to show off Dolphin iOS running with this new uh, StickJit app. It's it's really cool. I can't recommend it enough. Um, you have the ability to to enable JIT completely offline if you want to, so it's just it's just so cool. I'll probably also test the Play PS2 emulator as well. I'm very curious to see how that does here, but that will be in another video. But if you guys have any questions, comments, criticism, um, complaints, anything, please let me know. If you liked this video, leave a like. If you didn't, then leave a dislike. And if you're not subscribed already, please do that as well for my future videos. 
if um, if you guys want to see anything specific being tested, please let me know. I really appreciate you guys watching. Remember to always be grateful, and I will see you next time. Peace.